Lots of things dissolve in water, but not everything does. Here are some general solubility rules. Salts of alkali metals, ammonia, ethanoates, nitrates, chlorates, perchlorates, sulfates, chlorides, bromides, and iodides are all soluble, with the exception of lithium compounds, lead, silver, mercury, barium, strontium, and some calcium compounds. Sulfides and hydroxides are usually insoluble, with some exceptions. And carbonates, phosphates, and sulfides are insoluble, again, with some exceptions. But even these so-called insoluble salts will dissolve to a very small extent. We can calculate the extent of their solubility with a little manipulation of the equilibrium constant. Now I've modified this expression to be representative of a typical compound dissociating into cations and anions. On the bottom of the expression is the solid. The reality is that as long as the solid is present, the concentration of the solid is constant. So the constant can be combined with the equilibrium constant to form a new sort of constant called the solubility product constant, or KSP. It's simpler than the equilibrium constant because it will never include the solid, only the aqueous ions. Here's a dissociation equation for silver sulfide. It's considered to be insoluble, but let's see why. This is what the equilibrium expression for the equation would look like, but remember, a KSP is only the product of the aqueous chemicals. So the KSP of silver sulfide ends up being 8.01 times 10 to the negative 51, which indicates that this is a very, very insoluble compound because that number is so small. A high KSP indicates high solubility, and a low KSP indicates low solubility. There's also an interesting phenomena that can be done with the ions in solution. A common ion is an ion that's found in both salts in a solution. For example, sodium chloride can be dissolved in water until it's completely saturated in the water. The salt breaks into ions until saturation, and at that point, adding any more salt won't add any more ions. The salt just sinks to the bottom as solid sodium chloride. If we add very concentrated hydrochloric acid, which is the solution of hydrogen and chloride ions, we will see a shift in equilibrium toward the solid sodium chloride. Small salt crystals will form and sink to the bottom. Now why is this? It's the common ion effect. The lowering of the solubility of an ionic compound as a result of the addition of a common ion is called the common ion effect. Adding a common ion will shift the equilibrium toward the insoluble form, relieving the stress of the increased concentration of the common ion. In this case, that was a chloride ion. This is truly just another example of Le Chatelier's principle because the equilibrium shifts to relieve the stress of the increased concentration of the ion. But if you're mixing chemicals together, how can you be sure a precipitate will even form? If the products of the concentrations of two ions in the mixture is greater than the KSP of the compounds formed from the ions, a precipitate will form. Now let's see this in an example. You have half a liter of 0.002 molar barium nitrate, and you mix it with half a liter of 0.008 molar sodium sulfate. The KSP of barium sulfate is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10. Will barium sulfate precipitations occur? Well, by mixing these solutions together, we'll have a total of 1 liter of solution. Now, this changes the molarity of the solutions by cutting them in half because we've doubled their volume. So we actually now have 0.001 molar barium nitrate and 0.004 molar sodium sulfate. When we multiply these two molarities for each of the ions that make barium sulfate, we'll get 4 times 10 to the negative 6, which is more than the KSP. This means that we will in fact form a precipitate. The precipitation will occur until the amount of ions in solution is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 10, the KSP. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.